Hi friends, today we will study about the wave nature of matter and de Broglie's hypothesis. Welcome to this session. The dual that is wave particle nature of light that is electromagnetic radiation in general comes out clearly from what we have learnt in the preceding chapters. The wave nature of light shows up in the phenomena of interference, diffraction and polarization. On the other hand, in the photoelectric effect and Compton effect which involve energy and momentum transfer, radiation behaves as if it is made up of bunch of particles that is photons. Whether a particle or wave description is best suited for understanding an experiment depends on the nature of experiment. For example, in the phenomena of seeing an object by our eye, both descriptions are important. The gathering and focusing mechanism of light by eye lens is well described in the wave picture but its absorption by rods and cones of uh, the retina requires the photon picture of light. A natural question arises, if radiation has a dual or wave particle nature, might not the particles of nature that is electrons and protons etc., also exhibit the wave like character? These questions are answered in this part 2 of chapter 11. Let us study it in detail. I welcome you all. Please note down all important points as the same will help you in answering the questions. The nature of matter. In the year 1924, the French physicist Louis Victor de Broglie, pronounced as de Broglie, put forward the bold hypothesis that moving particles of matter should display wave like properties under suitable conditions. He reasoned that nature was symmetrical and that the two basic physical entities matter and energy must have this symmetrical character. If radiation shows dual aspects, so should the matter. De Broglie proposed that the wavelength associated with a particle of momentum T is given as lambda is equal to h by p, where lambda is the wavelength, h is Planck's constant and p is the momentum. That is also equal to h by m into v, that is mass into acceleration or velocity, where m is the mass of the particle and v is its speed. This equation is known as Broglie relation and wavelength of the matter is de Broglie wavelength. This is very important equation which explains the wave nature of matter. The left hand side of this equation and right hand side momentum P is the typical attribute of particle that is left hand side is represents a wave or a wavelength and right hand side P that is momentum represents the attribute of a particle. So, left hand side is wave, right hand side is particle. Planck's constant that is H relates the true attributes. When both M and V are large, 
as in the case of a ball. Lambda is so small that we cannot measure it. That means, a ball also should exhibit the properties of wave, but we cannot measure the wavelength. Hence, lambda is so small that we cannot measure it. Whereas, in the case of particles of an atom, if you consider an atom where both m and v are small, lambda is significant and measurable. This was the hypothesis of Broglie or de Broglie. He could not prove it experimentally, but he said this th th hypothesis is true. Kinetic energy of electrons. Consider an electron mass m and charge E accelerated from rest through a potential V. The kinetic energy K of the electron equals work done. That is E V E work done is E V on it by the electric field. Therefore, K is equal to E V that is equal to half m v square. As we know, the kinetic equation for kinetic energy is half into mass into v square velocity square. That is also given by p square divided by 2 m. That is p is equal to square root of 2 m k. That is p as written and m cross multiplied with k. So, p square p is the square root of 2 m k from this equation. De Broglie wavelength is given by from this equation lambda is equal to h by p that is the Broglie's equation De Broglie's equation that is equal to h divided by square root of 2 m k where we have substituted the value of the momentum. Therefore, lambda E as calculated is equal to h divided by we have substituted k equals E v electron volt. That equation is given by v no h by substituting the standard values of h uh, and m and e uh, as a standard for electrons is equal to 1.227 divided by square root of v nanometers. Here, V is the magnitude of the accelerating potential in volts and we have substituted the value of E that is charge of an electron, mass of an electron and Planck's constant. The experimental values of de Broglie wavelength is, is given by lambda is equal to 0 0.167 nanometers approximate value by substituting for an electron. The wavelength is of the same order as the spacing between the atomic planes in crystals. This suggests that the matter waves associated with an electron could be verified by crystal diffraction experiments analogous to X-ray diffraction. The matter wave picture elegantly incorporated the Heinsberg's uncertainty uncertainty principle. According to this principle, it is not possible to measure both the position and momentum of an atom or any other particle at the same time exactly. We can do it separately or independently, but at the same time it is not possible. That is the Heinsberg's uncertainty principle. davison germer experiment. The wave nature of electrons was first experimentally varied by C. J. Davison and L. H. Germer in 1927 and independently by G. P. Thompson in 1928, who observed diffraction effects with beams of electrons scattered by crystal. Davison and Thompson shared the Nobel Prize in 1937 for their experimental discovery of diffraction of electrons by crystals. There is an excellent agreement between the theoretical value and experimentally obtained value of 
de Broglie's wavelength. Davison Davison Germer experiments thus strikingly confirms the wave nature of electrons and de Broglie relation. In the year 1989, the wave nature of beam of electrons was experimentally demonstrated in a double slit experiment similar to that the one used for wave nature of light. Also in an experiment in 1994, interference fringes were obtained with the beams of iodine molecules which are about a million times more massive than, than electrons. De Broglie hypothesis has been basic to the development of modern quantum mechanics. It has also led to the field of electron optics. The wave properties of electrons have been utilized in the design of electron microscope, which is a great improvement with higher resolution over the optical microscope. Please note that CBSE while revising the syllabus for the academic year 2020-21 has just mentioned that details of Davison Germer experiment need not be studied but only to be mentioned. Has, hence, we have given this in a very, very brief. Now, let us study symbols, dimensions and unit of physical quantities. We have just studied different relationship between physical quantities in dual nature of wave theory. First is Planck's constant. Planck's constant symbol is h and its dimensions are ml square t to the power of minus 1. It is its unit is joule second and the relationship is E is equal to H nu. Stopping potential. Stopping potential we have studied in particle theory or photoelectric effects V naught. Its dimensions are m square m l square t to the power of minus 3 a to the power of minus 1. Uh, it, since it is a potential, its unit is volts. E V naught is equal to K max, where K is the kinetic energy, V naught is the stopping potential. Work function, work function is phi naught. In some of the problems, they, they mention it as W, work function, but its general accepted symbol is phi naught and its dimensions are ML square t to the power of minus 2 within bracket and unit is joules or electron volts. So, kinetic energy maximum is equal to E minus phi naught. This is the equation for K max. This is also uh, known as Einstein's wave equation. Threshold frequency. Threshold frequency is represent by, uh, represented by symbol nu naught. Sometimes we call it v naught, small v naught. It is dimensions are t to the power of minus 1. Its unit is hertz. That is because it is a frequency. Therefore, its relationship is v naught is equal to phi naught by h, where phi naught is the work function, h is the Planck's constant and nu naught is threshold frequency. And finally, de Broglie, de Broglie's wavelength lambda, symbol is lambda and its dimensions are L, it is in meter and relationship is lambda is equal to h divided by E, where lambda is the de Broglie, de Broglie's wavelength, h is Planck's constant and P is the momentum. Please remember all the symbols and a relationship between different parameters.
summary. Let us summarize what we have studied in dual nature of waves. The minimum energy needed by an electron to come out from a metal surface is called work function. Energy greater than the work function phi required for an electron emission to come out of the metal surface can be supplied by suitably heating or applying stro strong electric field or re irradiating it by light of suitable frequency. That means, the minimum energy required for an electron to come out of the metal surface is work function phi represented by phi, which can be obtained either by heating the photosensitive material or applying a strong electric field as in the case of spark plus or through radiation, irradiation of light or photo photoelectric emission of suitable frequency. Photoelectric effect is the phenomena of emission of electrons by metals when illuminated by light of suitable frequency. Certain metals respond to ultraviolet light while others sensitive even to the visible light. So, it is the characteristics of the metals which emit the light, which emit electrons when light falls on them. Photoelectric effect involves conservation of conversion of light energy into electric energy. That means, when light falls on the photosensitive material, electrons are omitted which constitutes electric current. It follows the law of conservation of energy. The photoelectric emission is an instantaneous process and possesses certain special features. Photoelectric current depends on the intensity of the incident light. The current, photoelectric current depends on intensity of incident light. The potential difference between the two electrodes that is emitter C and collector A as we had described in section 11.5 and 6. And finally, the photoelectric current also depends on the nature of the emitter material. Particle nature of light. The stopping potential V naught depends on the frequency of the incident light and number 2, the nature of the emitter material. For a given frequency of incident light, it is independent of the intensity. The stopping potential is directly proportional related to the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons emitted. Therefore, E V naught is equal to half m V max square that is equal to k max, k max is the potential energy, this is the relationship. And all these things we have studied in section 11.5 through various characteristic curves of the photoelectric effect. Below a certain frequency called threshold frequency nu naught, characteristics of the metal, no photo electron, photoelectric emission takes place. That is, below thre threshold frequency, there is no emission of electrons. Above electric uh, threshold frequency, it is directly proportional to the kinetic energy, no matter how large the intensity may be. That means, minimum frequency is a must. The classical wave theory could not explain the main features of photoelectric effect. Its picture of continuous absorption of energy from radiation could not explain the independence of k max on intensity. The existence of threshold frequency nu naught and instantaneous nature of the process. Einstein explained these features on the basis of photo photon picture of light. According to this, 
light is composed of discrete packets of energy called quanta or photons. Each photon carries an energy E equals to h nu, where h is the Planck's constant and v is the velocity E equals h v and momentum P is equal to h by lambda which depends on frequency v nu of the incident light and not on its intensity. Photoelectric emission from the metal surface occurs due to absorption of photon by an electron. This is the theory of Einstein. Einstein photoelectric equation is in accordance with the energy conservation law as applied to the photon absorption by an electron in the metal. The maximum kinetic energy of V max square is equal to the photon energy H nu minus the work function of the target metal. So, this equation he equated the kinetic energy equation half m v square that is v max square equals E v naught electron volt E v naught that is equal to H v minus phi naught. Therefore, rearranging this we get H into v minus v naught that, that is phi naught is equal to phi naught is equal to h into v naught. So, h is they are taken common and this becomes v minus v naught. This photoelectric equation explains all features of the photoelectric effect. Millikan's first precise measurement confirmed the Einstein's photoelectric equation and obtained an accurate value of Planck's constant h. This led to the acceptance of particle or photon description of electromagnetic radiation introduced by Einstein. So, Einstein introduced the photon description of electromagnetic radiation that is particles nature of the waves of the electromagnetic waves. Point number 8. Radiation has dual nature, wave and particle. The nature of experiment determines whether a wave or a particle description is best suited for understanding the experimental result. Reasoning that radiation matter should be symmetrical in nature. Louis Victor de Broglie attribute, attributed a wave like character to matter that is a material particles. The waves associated with the moving material particles are called matter waves or de Broglie waves. De Broglie's hypothesis. De Broglie wavelength lambda associated with a moving particle is related to its momentum P as lambda is equal to h by P. Left side is a wave nature and right side is a particle nature. The dualism of the matter is inherent in the de Broglie's relation which contains a wave concept lambda and a particle concept P that is momentum. The de Broglie wavelength is independent of the charge and nature of the material particle. It is significantly measurable of the order of atomic planes spacing in crystals only in case of subatomic particles like electrons, protons, etcetera due to small size or smallness of their masses and hence the momentum. However, it is indeed very small quite beyond measurement in case of macroscopic objects commonly encountered in everyday life. Say for example, according to him a ball is also a wave, human beings are also a wave, but here we cannot measure the wavelengths. 
only in case of small particles like electrons, protons and alpha particles, it is possible to measure the wavelength and prove it experimentally. Electron diffraction experiments by Davison and Germer and by G. P. Thomson as well as many later experiments have verified and confirmed the wave nature of electrons. De Broglie hypothesis of matter, matter wave supports Bohr's concept of stationary orbits. Now, after completion of this summary power part, we will move to question and answer section of this chapter. An electron and question number 1. An electron and alpha particles have the same de Broglie wavelength associated with them. How are their kinetic energies related to each other? In this question, he has asked he says same wavelength is same for an electron as well as the alpha particles. So, he wants us to tell what is the relationship between their kinetic energy. Let us answer this question. We know de Broglie's equation relates wavelength with momentum and its relationship is given by lambda is equal to h by under root 2 m k. Under root 2 m k is the equation for momentum that is for particle nature, but here he has given an electron. For electron mass is m e and kinetic energy let it be k e under root this is the equation for electron. And similarly, since he says lambda is same, Broglie de Broglie's wavelength is same, same. So, this is also equal to h divided by h is same, Planck's constant same for both constant that is divided by alpha square root of 2 into m alpha into k alpha because mass of alpha particle is different and its kinetic energy is also different. This is the interrelationship between the two when lambda is same that is why we have equated both. Therefore, if they are equal, but we know mass of electron is less than the mass of alpha particle. So, therefore, m e is less than m e. Hence, the product m e into k e should be same that is why k e should be larger than k e, hence they are related in this way. This may be a one mark question, may be, please check up. Problem number 2, the graph shows variation of stopping potential V naught versus frequency of incident radiation nu for two photosensitive materials A and B. Which of the two metal has higher threshold frequency and why? This is he has given the graph. This is stopping potential and frequency versus frequency. This we have studied in section 11.5 and 11.6. So, threshold frequency for metal A is nu naught and thre threshold frequency for metal B is nu naught dash, nu naught dash. So, nu is greater than nu naught dash. Therefore, the frequency of incident radiation for metal B is greater than metal A. And the question he has asked is, which of the two metal has higher threshold frequency? Nu naught is a threshold frequency here and nu naught dash is the threshold frequency for B. From the graph, nu naught dash is greater than nu naught. Hence, threshold frequency is greater for material B. Name the phenomena which shows problem number 3. 
name the phenomena which shows the quantum nature of electromagnetic radiation. Answer. The photoelectric effect shows the quantum nature of electromagnetic radiation. This is, these are all one mark questions. Please note, photoelectric effect shows the quantum nature of electromagnetic nature radiation. Which experiment establishes the wave nature of particle? The wave nature of particle is established by Davison Germer experiment. See, he has asked question, but hypothesis is given by de Broglie, but it was experimentally proved by Davison Germer. Which optical phenomena is exhibited by particle in famous Davison Germer experiment? With though we have not studied this experiment in detail, please note, it is the phenomena is a diffraction of light. <coughs> Question number 6. In a photoelectric experiment, the following graphs were obtained between photoelectric current and applied voltage. Name the characteristics of the incident radiation that was kept constant and that was variable in this experiment. See, he has given a graph, but he has simply shown this is a photo current in microamps, photoelectric current and this is the applied potential and simply he has shown the curves. From our knowledge and studies, we know that this, this stopping potential is same. Stopping potential is same when intensity of light is different. Here intensity of light is different, so the saturation current is different saturation current is different, but stopping potential is same. Hence, from our knowledge and study, we know because he asked name that was kept constant for all the three graphs, what was the characteristic that was kept constant. Here frequency was kept constant because stopping potential is same and the Saturation current is different, saturation current is different for intensity of light, hence it is given, you see that was kept constant, frequency was constant and the variable in this experiment was intensity of radiation I. In the figure if you remember this is I 1, I 2 and I 3, I 3 is greater than I 2 and I 1 and then I was intensity, hence intensity was variable, frequency was fixed. A two important properties of photon which are used to write Einstein's photoelectric equation. The properties of photon used to write Einstein's photoelectric equation are the rest mass of photon is 0, that is photon has a 0 mass and the other second is energy of photon is given by E is equal to H nu where E is the energy, H is Planck's constant and nu is the velocity. Question number 8, define one stopping potential and threshold frequency using Einstein's equation and drawing and by drawing necessary plot between relevant quantities. He has asked to define stopping potential and threshold frequency using Einstein's equation and drawing necessary plot between the relevant quantities. Stopping potential. For a particular frequency of incident radiation, the minimum negative retarding potential V naught for which photo current stops or becomes 0 is called the cutoff or the stopping potential. Threshold frequency, it is the minimum frequency required for photo electrons to be emitted for from a metal surface. The relevant graphs is a drawing the necessary plot between relevant quantity. The first is saturation current versus potential. So, here the saturation current is same and for different frequencies stopping potentials are different. 
V S two is the stopping potential for curve V two nu two and for frequency nu one it is V S one. These are two different frequencies, but saturation current is same. In our theory class, we have shown it as a graph number three in section eleven point five. And another uh, plot is that is stopping potential V S versus nu frequency. This V naught is called the threshold frequency. This is the minimum frequency above which there is emission, below which there is no emission. These are the two plots. Using photon picture of light show how Einstein's photoelectric equation can be established. Write two features of photoelectric effect which cannot be explained by wave theory. Answer. When a photon energy H nu falls on the metal surface, the energy of photon is absorbed by the electron and this is used in two ways. A part of energy is used to come to overcome the surface barrier that is work function and come out of the material metal surface. This part of energy is called work function given by phi is equal to H nu naught. The remaining part of the energy is used in giving a velocity V to the emitted photoelectron. This equals the maximum kinetic energy. Hence, the photon energy is converted as a work function and the remaining kinetic energy. So, half m v square is the kinetic energy and where m is the mass of substance. So, this h nu that is the photon energy h nu is equal to potential energy max plus phi naught where phi naught is the work function. So, rearranging this equation we get k max is equal to h v minus phi naught, but for initially phi naught is given by v naught into h that is v naught is equal to phi naught by h. Therefore, e v naught e v naught in this e v naught is equal to h nu minus phi naught. Therefore, v naught is equals h by e into v minus phi naught by e phi naught by e nu. Therefore, k max is equal to h nu minus h v naught that is equal to half m v square k maximum is half m v square is equal to h into nu minus nu naught. This equation is known as Einstein's photoelectric equation. Features of photoelectric effect which cannot be explained on the basis of wave theory. This question is asked many times, please note it, it is very important. Maximum kinetic energy of a photoelectrons each independent of the intensity of light. It cannot be explained in the wave theory. There exists a minimum frequency that is the threshold frequency for each photosensitive material below which no photo emission is possible. Wave theory could not explain it. These are the experimental results. And finally, there is the photoelectric effect is instantaneous in nature. This also part could not be explained on the basis of wave theory. Then question number 10, draw graph showing variation of photoelectric current with applied uh, applied voltage that is photoelectric current nu i nu m amps versus applied voltage for two incident radiations of equal frequency and different intensities. Please note equal frequency, frequency is same and but different intensity. Mark the graph for radiation of higher intensity this is a question, draw the graphs. So, these graphs we have drawn in our theory part in the section 11.5, it is graph number 2. Hence, for intensity I 1, this is the lower graph L 1, here he has represented, we have written as light L 1, intensity L 1 and upper curve is for intensity L 2. So, 
from our knowledge L2 is greater than L1. This we you can mark it. And here the start stopping potential is same. For the same frequency, stopping potential is same, but intensities are different. Question number 11. <coughs> An electromagnetic wave of wavelength lambda is incident on a photosensitive surface of negligible work function. If the photoelectrons emitted from this surface have de Broglie wavelength lambda 1, prove that h is equal to lambda prove that sorry prove that lambda is equal to h divided by 2 m c. Please solve it. Here negligible work function. Please read the problem once again. Here the photosensitive surface has negligible work function that means phi naught is equal to 0. So, using Einstein's photoelectric equation that is half m v square is equal to h nu minus phi naught that is equal to h nu and substituting the equation we get 1 by 2 m v square is equal to h c divided by lambda. Therefore, frequency nu is given by under root rearranging the equation v square you keep v square on the left side and take everything on the right side that will be equal to under root 2 h c divided by m lambda. Now, we know de Broglie's equation for emitted photo electrons is lambda 1 is equal to h divided by p that is equal to h divided by m v. Therefore, lambda 1 becomes substituting the value of p, substituting the value of v from equation 1, we retain h and m as it is and v equal under root h c divided by m lambda 1 that is equal to h divided by 2 m c because everything gets cancelled and only h divided by 2 m c. Please practice it in your notebook and simplify this equation number 3. You will get this as the and this is the proof. Question number 12. Plot the graph showing the variation of stopping potential with frequency of incident radiation for two different photosensitive materials having work, fun work functions W1 and W2, where W1 is greater than W2. What is the significance of the slope, number 1, and number 2, intercept of the lines depend. So, please read the question once again and note down. Let us answer. See, he has given plot the plot a graph showing the variation of stopping potential with frequency of incident radiation. See, this is the stopping potential on y axis and here on the x axis we have the frequency of incident radiation nu and it has got two different threshold frequencies u naught and u naught dash. This is for material A and this is for metal B. So, he is asking show the variation of stopping potential with frequency for two different photosensitive materials. Metal A is a one photosensitive material, material B is another one. And he asks what is the significance of slope, one slope and two slope, okay, and lines depend on. Answer this graph we have drawn, plot a graph we have drawn, okay. Answer answer is V know V naught is equal to h by e into nu minus phi naught by e. Hence, this minus is the it is for from the Einstein's photoelectric equation, the slope of graph 
is h by e. See, this is the slope. We know the equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. Okay. Here c is minus negative. So, this is the intercept on y axis. Planck's constant divided by electronic charge h by e that is Planck's constant divided by h e. Slope, this is the slope and the intercept of this graph is w by e that is work function divided by e electronic charge. This is the answer. Question, question number 13a, why photoelectric effect cannot be explained on the basis of wave nature of light? Give reasons. Part B, write the basic features of photon pictures of electromagnetic radiation on which Einstein's photoelectric equation is based. Answer is here. Features of photoelectric effect cannot be explained on the basis of wave theory. Maximum kinetic energy of emitted electrons each independent of intensity of light. That is, why kinetic energy is independent of the intensity of light? It cannot explain. There exists a minimum threshold frequency for each photosensitive material below which no emission takes place. It cannot explain. Photoelectric effect is instantaneous in nature, immediately it starts emission. It has not been able to explain in the wave equations. The properties of photon used to write Einstein's photoelectric current are the rest mass of photon is 0, that is photon at rest, the mass of photon is 0 at rest and the energy of photon is given by E is equal to H nu. Question number 14. The given graph shows the variation of photoelectric current versus the applied voltage V for two different photosensitive materials and for two different intensities of incident radiation. Identify the pairs of curves that correspond to the different materials, but same intensity of radiation. So, he has given this curve, curve 1, it stopped, it, it is just given, he has not mentioned anything, he has simply told what voltage on the potential on the, on the x axis and i on the y axis and he has simply given the curve numbers. So, he says it is a variation of I with respect to voltage for two different photosensitive materials and he has not told which curve is for which metal. Okay. He says versus this is one is for two different photo and for two different intensities. He has also told two different intensities. From our knowledge we know this curve is for intensity I 2 and this is the curve for uh, for intensity I 1 and these are all stopping potentials, just uh, st stopping, uh, not stopping sorry, this, these are all saturation current sorry, this is saturation current 1 and this is saturation current 2. Okay. Identify the pairs of curves that correspond to different materials, but same intensity of incident radiation. So, incident intensity same means this is one curve. So, curve 1 and 3 have the same intensity and curve 2 and 4 have the same intensity. So, you identify the pair, pair of curves. Okay. This we have to answer. Let us see how we answer it. Curve 1 and 3 and curves 2 and 3 have correspond to different materials. This is a different material, 1 and 3 is different material, 2 and 3 is different material because intensity is different and stopping potential is different. For a given frequency of incident radiation, the stopping potential is independent of the intensity. Hence, this is independent of the intensity. So, 
curves 1 and 3 and 2 and 4 are have the different stopping potential. So, the materials are different. Question number 15. A proton and alpha particles are accelerated through the same potential difference. Which one of the two has greater de Broglie wavelength and less kinetic energy? Justify your answer. Answer. From de Broglie relations, we know lambda is equal to h by p. p is the momentum and it is given by the relations under root 2 m k. Therefore, lambda is equal to h divided by 2 m k, where lambda is de Broglie's wavelength and h is Planck's constant and m is the mass and k is the kinetic energy. So, let us substitute for alpha particle and for an proton. Okay, let us take alpha particle first. Alpha particle it is given by lambda of alpha is equal to h divided by 2 of mass of alpha and kinetic energy of alpha particle. Similarly, for proton lambda p is equal to h divided by under root 2 of m p mass of proton and k p is the kinetic energy of proton. So, we know mass of alpha particle is more than mass of proton. From our basic knowledge which we have studied from atomic structure and which we are going to study further in next 2 to 3 chapters, m alpha is greater than m p. Therefore, when this is greater than this, lambda p is greater than alpha. When m alpha is greater than m p, therefore, it greater means this is less, lambda is less, this here lambda is more. Therefore, lambda is more than lambda alpha. Since lambda p and lambda, lambda p is greater than lambda alpha, the kinetic energy is less than kinetic energy of proton is less than the kinetic energy of alpha particle. Let us take example number 16. The stopping potential in an experiment on photoelectric effect is 2 volts. What is the maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons emitted? This we have solved in even the previous chapter that is part 1, 11 of part 1 k maximum is equal to E into E naught that is equal to E value of E is we know 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 into 2. Therefore, the k max is 3.2 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. This may be a one mark question. 17. Show graphically the variation of de Broglie's wavelength lambda with potential V through which an electron is accelerated from rest answer. This is the relationship between lambda and square root of that is inverse proportionality. As we increase the potential, the wavelength decreases. This is the relationship. Problem number 18. Light of intensity i and frequency nu is incident on photosensitive surface and causes photoelectric emission. What will be the effect on photo current when the intensity of light is gradually increased, the frequency of the incident radiation is increased and anode potential is increased. Note in each case all the factors remain same, explain giving justification in each case. As we increase the intensity of the radiation, the number of pro photons increase and we know that each photon will impart energy to each electron and hence the number of electrons increase so that for so that the photo current. Question answer number 2. On increasing the frequency above threshold frequency, only the energy of photons increases not their number. Hence, the photon current will remain almost constant. With an increase in accelerating potential, the photoelectric current increases first and reaches a maximum when all electrons get collected at the positive potential of the plate. 
and then remains constant. The maximum value of anode current is called the saturation current. This we have seen it, the, this process we have seen in graph number 3, graph number 2, sorry, graph number 2 of 11.5. This is uh, we have seen in graph number 4 okay. and uh, this we have seen in graph number 2. This, this, uh, this we have seen intensity of radiation and number variation with intensity and this with this we conclude our chapter number 11. Thank you.